What up, gang? Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It is Friday morning, a rainy and thundering Friday morning here in the upstate of South Carolina. However, hope the sun is shining wherever you're at. Hope you're having a great day. Listen, if you're new around here, Skinner saying true around here by hitting the thumbs up, subscribing to the Carolina Jackpot channel. We do college sports content here all year long concentrated on college football, but right now we're talking a lot of college basketball because <coughs> it's big news, <coughs> excuse me, out of Columbia, South Carolina, yesterday and today, guys, and not talking about the play on the court. We're talking about in the boardroom, contract extension going on has been approved and is ready to go for head coach Lamont Paris. He just finished up his second season at South Carolina, well, the season's not over yet, but the regular season has concluded. He's got a 26-6 and record right now. And they jumped from 11-21 and last year and last place in the SEC to 26-6. and Right now, we're in the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament today against Auburn. We'll get to that in a moment. But it's more importantly, they had to lock him up, guys, and, and they did so in quick fashion. Uh, because they knew there's there's tons of openings around the country, or there are going to be tons of openings. Uh, you saw Deep Hall the other night, a terrible team, uh, played, I believe it was Tuesday night, and then Wednesday morning, uh, they're announcing a new head coach. Or maybe it was Wednesday night, Thursday. It was Wednesday night, Thursday morning. They got a new head coach already. So things move fast, and they had to move fast and get him sewed up, That is exact, or get him zipped up, more appropriately, and they did absolutely that. He has a new deal uh, that puts him in Columbia through the 2029-2030 season. He's going to make $3.75 million his first year, and then that deal is going to grow $250,000 each year after that that he stays at South Carolina, and he'll have the potential to make $5 million the last year of his contract. That's kind of nullifying the old deal he had, which was a five-year deal that he signed back in 2022 for $2.2 million per year. So he's essentially almost doubling his salary. Uh, on top of that, that he's likely to get um, endorsements and things uh, from other places now with the notoriety that he's gained um, just by doing an outstanding job, by being the SEC Coach of the Year. Nobody saw this coming. Not I didn't see this coming. I, I thought that they would be improved a little bit over last year, even though they were picked so low uh, in the conference. You know, we lost uh, Gigi Jackson, who was well, the star of the team last year. He was a 17-year-old kid. He was an NBA lottery pick. And it, the, the thing that I like about Lamont Paris is he's a player's coach. I mean, he loves his players, but he's also – not scared to discipline those players. He's not scared to test that ass when you cut out a line. And we saw that last year with Gigi Jackson. Uh, went on Instagram, did some silly stuff, and he he benched him. He benched him for having poor attitude. And Michi Johnson, the star of the team this year, he was having a bad game. I think he had his ass on his shoulders a little bit, and Lamont Paris sat him down. I and mean, he's not worried about, oh, he might hit the transfer portal, or, you know, or whatever. A lot of these coaches who walk around on eggshells, not or they're scared of their assistant coaches. It seems like they're scared of their players. Not him. I mean, he's very he has a very calm demeanor, but he acts swiftly when he sees a problem and he's going to eradicate it. Um, he's totally different than a coach like a, a Shane Beamer who is – in my mind, is held captive a lot by his assistant coaches and uh, by his players. That's just my take on that. Um, but this salary is going to put him, um, if you're looking at 2023, 20, 24 salaries, somewhere in the 15 range, if he were getting paid that this year. Now, of course, coach salaries will go up next year. They go up every year. But I was just looking at the list of the top 15 paid coaches in college basketball. I've never really looked at this list before. And uh, it was kind of eye-opening. John Calipari is number one at $8.3 million a year. That's not surprising. But what's surprising is the gap between one and two. Number two is Tom Izzo at Michigan State at $6.2 million. Then you go down to Bill Self at Kansas at 5.96. Then Rick Barnes at Tennessee, 5.77. 
Bruce Pearl at Auburn, who we'll see today, 5.65 million. And Kelvin Sampson at Houston is down at $5 million. Ed Cooley at Providence, who makes uh, around $3.75 million a year, and Scott Drew at Baylor, who makes $3.7 million a year, are right around where Lamont Paris will be landing at right now. Uh, so I think that's fair. He's done a hell of a job this year, but the body of work isn't big enough quite yet to command like those big, big bucks you're talking about in the high fives or six. They can't do that right now. Uh, but he, I think it's definitely this, he's fairly compensated with the potential for it to grow. Um, Matt Painter at Purdue, I was noticing, makes $3.58 million a year. Um, and he's really low on the list. Purdue is like a consistent top five team. And now they don't have a lot of tournament success. I don't know if that's what it is. But he's really low relative to the success they've had on the basketball court. He's lower than Jawan Howard at Michigan with $3.61 million, uh, who won eight games this year. And I know he, uh, he played at Michigan. I don't even know if he even still has a job anymore, as terrible as they were. Now, so we've got our quarter, we've got our quarter zip, zipped up and ready to go. These animals are acting a fool today because it's raining outside. They tend to do that. We've got him zipped up. Now it's on to bigger things. Today we're in the quarterfinals against Auburn, and the SEC tournament's going to be on at around 3.30 p.m. I say around because, you know, those games never really start on time. It'll be a little later than 3.30 that game's going to be live streamed here on the Carolina Jackpot channel. Please tune into it if you're able to or able to catch part of it in the second half or whatever. We lost by 40 against Auburn back on Valentine's Day. In today's game, it's not about avenging a loss to Auburn. It's about advancing in this tournament. Yeah, there are some folks out there who say, well, I'd rather just go one and done in the conference tournament and save up so that we can – be ready for the NCAA tournament. No, it's not about that. It, you win. You win as many as you can. It's all about the winning. As a smart man over in the corner of the upstate once said, the fun's in the winning. I bet y'all can't guess who that was. But uh, Auburn comes into this game. They're 24-7, and seven, uh, averaging 84.9 points a game. The Gamecocks are averaging around 34, or it's 34, 73 points per game. As I said, they beat us back on Valentine's Day. At Auburn, 101 to 61. And the, the thing in that game was Auburn got a lead and it just snowballed. Um, they shot 60% from three point range. They were 12 20 on three pointers. Their forward, Johnny Broom, who I have uh, nicknamed uh, Neckbeard, uh, went four or five on three pointers. Uh, Jalen Williams, the other kid, had, he shot the bottom out of the basket as well. Gamecocks were 3 of 15 on three-pointers in that game. There's the difference right there in the game. Auburn also shot less foul shots in South Carolina. South Carolina is normally more physical than the teams they play. So I think today South Carolina is going to bring it. Uh, they know Auburn is a team that can score a lot of points. And I'm by no means a basketball expert, uh, by, by no means. But I think that South Carolina is definitely going to beat them up in the paint. Uh, they're going to be very physical today. They're going to slow the game down, uh, which the, the game had a really fast tempo uh, at Auburn. Uh, we just weren't able to hit any shots. We were terrible from the field, terrible from the three-point line, uh, okay from the foul line in that game, which is surprising because if I could say one thing about these Lamont Paris teams that is kind of negative, the, the foul shooting is not there. They, they have definitely got to get better on their foul shooting for the NCAA tournament. And quite frankly, I don't think that they will. I don't think that's something that you can correct overnight. That's something that's going to take a while to fix. But this, this is going to be a big game. Uh, right now, Auburn's sitting at a 7.5-point favorite. If I were you, I would uh, lay my money with the Gamecocks. I might not tell you how to spend your money. But I think that South Carolina is going to come in there fired up. They're going to be ready to go. And uh, it's going to be a good game. And I, we could definitely take them down, uh, of course. And if they play like we played in that first half against Arkansas the other day, though, they could get blown out again. It could very, very conceivably happen. So 3.30 p.m. today, live stream here on the channel. If the game hasn't started yet, we'll just – 
We'll just chew the fat. We'll drink some beers. We'll talk about whatever's going on on the screen right then, and then we'll get into the game when it starts. I'll see y'all then, guys. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out. Spurs up my toes up.